Uh, in case you just tuned in, a viewer in Stuck in Silver just sent me a replay. And he's looking to elevate his level of play so that he can get to gold. I don't know if my analysis will in any way, shape or form be valuable. But if it is, I will do my best. For now, I'd like to go and analyze this replay. So this is the part of the stream where we actually yeah, look at the viewer replay. Last one was pretty uh, well liked, so I'll do my best. Uh, Zetixel, that was the name. Okay, so we're following this Brightwing player. He's currently uh, hovering between Silver 1 and Silver 3. And he's looking to get to gold. But every time he gets to the promotion match, he doesn't make it. Now, it could be a level of play. It could be bad luck. Or it could be mental. So I'm just going to preface this by saying that as soon as you stop thinking about your promotion game as a promotion game, maybe it'll be better. Uh, it could be that every time you, you get to the point where push comes to shove, you think you have to do something extra. So you change something. But it's best to stick with what you know, what has been working for you. If you already fit that category, no worries. But just uh, just as a little maybe. So we're following this bright wing here. And, you know, I don't know how you get stuck with a draft like this. It is definitely salvageable. But I will say that this is... Uh, they, they have a better draft. First of all, it's Infernal Shrines. So you're looking at Kerrigan, who dominates uh, Infernal Shrines. I'm just going to pause it for a sec here because... Jaina is extremely out of position. Uh, Kerrigan dominates Infernal Shrines. Murky is very good in Hero League in general. Uh, is just a top pick right now. Especially against you know people that completely don't counterpick him, ignore him and so on. I might just want to let the replay run so something is moving on the screen. Uh, and I don't pause the game which is a little boring. So I'm just going to start again. But I do want to talk about this. Prepare. Then they have ETC, arguably top three warriors right now, top three tanks. They have Lucio, who has a good win rate. He's not always ideal as a solo healer, but if you actually look at the draft, he's pretty okay here. He's not ideal as a healer against Jaina, though he does cancel out some of her chill effect with his movement bonus. But Sylvanas and Illidan do some sustained damage around the team, same as Stitches, and Lucio outheals that pretty well. Then they have Gul'dan, one of the top mages. Uh, Jaina has been going up in popularity, which is pretty okay as well. Stitches performs very poorly right now, so you got stuck with that is unfortunate. And he's worse on Infernal Shrines than almost on any other map. So, Greetings, just friend. talking about the influence you, Zetixo, could have had, I don't think you can really influence people's draft that much at Silver. The Jaina is extremely far out of position. Not only are you not allowed to be in front of your tank in general you're not allowed to be that against kerrigan and etc and furthermore when you have stitches you should be even further back than usual because he's gonna hook someone in and all you need to do is to follow up on that now if he misses all of his hooks sad story right but that's on him you can't affect that but you need to think mentally as a mage frostbolt only and I'll follow up on hook, that's it. Frostbolt only, and I'll follow up on hook. Never even Blizzard Cone of Cold, because you needed to follow up. Now use the Tixo here as the Brightwing. What you need to do is to Polymorph follow up on a hook as well. But I do think your draft is extremely busted. Stitches is far back, because he's looking for the hooks. And you guys are continually in front of Stitches, which just makes me nervous. Okay, your polymorph is a little bit late because you're thinking about arcane flowering as, uh, you know, as an initiation, which you should not be doing. But one thing that I just want to kind of say is that Sylvanas is not a solo lane character. People often put Sylvanas in solo lane, and we saw this in the last replay analysis as well, but she's not. Murky, yes. Asmodan, maybe. But Sylvanas is a three lane hero. As Brightwing... You should recognize that Stitches is self-sufficient, so is Illidan, unless they're, you know, bad. Uh, Jaina is kind of dependent, but if you at all understand the draft, how the draft should be is Illidan top, Stitches mid, try bottom. Jaina, Sylvanas and Brightwing together at bottom. And that would be much better. Uh, even if you don't do it that way and Jaina stays with Stitches for whatever reason. Oh my god, the Sheena! Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, she's super far forward all the time. Uh, I don't think you can do anything to change that. But, uh, I think as Brightwing, you get the most value if you're in the Sylvanas lane. 
And then, worst comes to worst, you can still port to someone to try and save them. For example, Illidan or something. That would have been a great opportunity to follow up. Um, really, when you play with Stitches, you need to save most of your cooldowns for Hook. And just be ready about that. You can tell by the way Stitches moves where he's getting ready for it as well. Oh my god, stop being in front of Jaina! And Stitches is playing too far back. Um, either way, if you think that you don't have a chance to capture the shrine, try to just kind of change the way you view the game here. And you're not going to beat this comp. They, they have a better fighting comp, so play it differently. Maybe Brightwing can be uh, split pushing. Maybe Illidan can be doing camps, maybe Sylvanas can be pushing, that kind of thing. But actually beating up against the wall, like kind of like walk, trying to walk through a wall here, is just going to make things worse. Now, one thing to keep in mind, at low level, mid level and hell, I know, even at Grandmaster, people love to throw games. So it doesn't matter how far behind you are, you never lose hope. It doesn't matter how bad your draft is. Hilarious throws happen so frequently. Oh, Jaina. So, like, how I'm feeling now about Jaina is how you should not feel. Just do your best. And any investment you make in yourself in trying to keep, uh, you know, this is kind of interesting. Any investment you make in yourself, like keeping it cool, following the best that you can, doing what you think is best despite all the bad things that are happening is going to be an investment in your own skill for next game. So it's much more important that you're worrying about improvement rather than promotion or uh, the malady of the current situation. It's like, oh my god, this player is so bad, I'm not promoting again. That doesn't really do anything for you. And if you want to focus on positive emotions that are productive, you should consistently think about what can I learn to do better this game that will help me next game. That, in the end, gets you to be going to bed with a satisfied feeling and knowing that you learned something today and then eventually ranks and wins will follow look at this everything has been really awful for you so far but you're only down a level not even a fort so that's that just goes to show at some point stitches is gonna land some mega hook he's gonna do a gorge you get a kill and it will throw now let's look at your builds because we're kind of trying to look at you uh, you went for Manic Pixie, Bonus Healing, uh, and Furling Spray, and you got Cleanse. Considering that you haven't used your B and Z once yet, I think it's good that you took in Furling. I also don't think the Bribe would have been good for you. But I do want to put a small note here, both about your hero pick and as well as your trait usage and your uh, mount usage. I've seen you with almost no mana for a very long period of time. Oh, uh, can you turn... Can you volume down the replay or volume up your voice? Yeah, good point, good point. We can do that. Uh, I've seen you at low mana for a very long period of time, for many, many minutes. And Brightwing isn't just about porting north to south. She's also about having a pocket healing fountain in the sense that she can B to the core, Hearthstone, and then Z back. You don't hey, want to do that right before you would otherwise need it as a global teleport across to a different lane. But you definitely want to use it more often than you have been doing so far. Uh, if you if the objective is just over and you've defended it and everyone is going to the merc camps and you find yourself at 10% life, do do the B into Z. Now about your position. If we just kind of look at the map. Okay. First of all, the objective is being spawned. Which means that everyone's radar is going to go on the objective. That means that wherever they are, they're going to be coming soon. Your vision is such that you'll be in front of the tank, in front of everyone else, doing something else than others, which, by the way, is unnecessary. Why is it important for you to clear this wave right now? Why is it better to clear it now than to clear it when it gets to its standard position here in the middle of the lane. Is it really? Are you reaching a new level soon? Are you reaching a new talent soon? How do you explain the risk here of doing this? Because it is a risk. You don't know where they are. They could be five here, they could be five here, they could be five here, and you are going to die. In fact, no matter what the opponent does, you should take this one as a moment where you say, I'm dead. End of story. 
this is a mistake. Even if it doesn't go punished, it doesn't mean it was good. And sometimes things that do get you killed can be good despite you getting killed. Just because you evaluate, this wasn't a mistake. It was just, you know, something else. So you cannot be result oriented when you evaluate the mistakes in your own play. It's about the potential of things going bad. That is the true metric of the value of your moves. Anytime you see opponents missing on the map, you need to imagine that they could be coming for you. Let's take a look at their mini their vision. Wow, they see two people on the objective, two squishies in front, and the stitches, the tank missing. And Stitch is not really a scary tank. So what does it mean is that they're gonna ping the hell out of you, kill this Brightwing. So definitely wanna look out for that. In terms of your build, I like it. You took Cleanse for Kerrigan and ETC combo. You took uh, extra healing and then the Unfurling Spray. I think it's a good build, good build choices. Uh, here I'd like to see you kind of like loop around the left side because you're all cluttered and that means you will get uh, stunned with the rest of them. So whenever you stay directly behind people that are potentially at risk, you're more likely to get power slided, you're more likely to get uh, Kerrigan comboed as well. Here I'd like to see you loop around like this. Always try to separate yourself from your teammates so that you don't get stunned and then you can still cleanse them. Okay, someone gets Greetings, stunned and you friend. use cleanse on Jaina. Uh, not a bad idea uh, because you thought she's going to get stunned. Oh look, that's a lot of damage on them. Okay, careful. You're moving forward, they are running, but that doesn't mean they're dying. There's a very big predator instinct mechanism syndrome mistake that people make is that anytime people run, people chase. And you want to kind of like uh, get over that. Now let's look at your Z cooldown. It's coming back and you have almost no mana. So it could be... Wait, why does it say you have 360 mana here, but here I see your bar is empty. It's just a bug. Uh, you walked forward, even though... Actually, there's a lot of bugs. They got the Punisher, even though it says 17 here. But let's try to ignore that. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. The Punisher isn't taken. I don't know why I thought that. But uh, yeah, you got comboed there. You should be dead once again. You have no mana. And uh, you walked into the dark. Into a Kerrigan ETC team. That has as much skeletons as you. They're reaching level 10. So part of rising about above silver isn't about getting better teammates only like sure it'll be nice but we've got to believe that the matchmaking system is working why do we have to believe in it because you can't change the system so even if it is rotten to the core you still have to believe that it's correct and i'm not saying it is rotten it is best to change the things you can for the better to leave the things you can't change so that you don't have uh, mental problems about it and to have the wisdom of knowing which things are changeable and which aren't so since you can't change the matchmaking unless you think that your extensive reddit lobbying is going to make things better just pretend the system is fine you're going to get good teammates as often as you're going to get bad ones and believe in yourself to become better and i can see a lot of improvements here for you potentially <laughs> So be logical about your moves, evaluate critically. Everything you do, is this going to make things better or worse? Moving together with your range squish in front into a full stun combo is not the best. Now look at this, everything has gone pretty bad. And yet you're only down less than a level. You've got plenty of chances to win the game. Small things that you would have done better, would have, could have made you win the game. Assuming that you lost this one. Look at this, what was that? ETC Kerrigan going off by themselves without the support and assassin. Now let's talk about your heroic choice, Brightwing. Also, don't say lol. It makes your team less serious, usually. Uh, I think it is best to have zero communication that isn't 100% focused on the objectives. I know it seems fun, or maybe you feel a bit relaxed because you felt a lot of pressure. And I'm not saying it's wrong by itself. I'm just talking about... What are you doing, Sylvanas? 
I'm just talking about what I have personally noticed as soon as I start as soon as I start laughing why is he going here why is he not mounting up uh, as soon as you start laughing people get a little bit more relaxed and they lose some of their focus so try not to uh, do that wait a minute I think we just found a map hacker Uh, t two reasons she's a map hacker. One is she doesn't mount, so she's retarded. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't use that word, my bad. She doesn't use mount, so she's not a very clever girl. And secondly, she's going straight for something. She has no possibility of knowing where it is. Unless there's some kind of bug about uh, Murky showing where his egg is, but I don't think there's currently a bug like that in the game. Anyway, back to Brightwing. <laughs> Uh, let's see, you port here, so that's good. Oh, nice job, nice job. I'm just wondering, is Emerald Wind the best here? And I th I'm not sure about the answer, but I think it's okay. Considering they have ETC, Kerrigan, and Murky, uh, they can have pretty hard engage. I still usually favor Blink Heal, just so that you can save yourself from combos. As soon as you see Kerrigan Ravage on you, you can Blink Heal to a teammate. Plus, Brightwing solo support, in my opinion, is not ideal. She, to be fair, she was checking several different bushes, but I don't know. Um, but uh, there is... Um, Blink Heal can save yourself and teammates. Emerald Wind is nice damage, and it might be good, but I'm always a bit not sure about actually using emerald wind as a solo support if you're not very 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 good but i think it's okay there's a case to be made for both now this one in my opinion is 100 percent wrong uh when you go for emerald wind in my opinion sh you should only ever go ice block because you li literally after using emerald wind you have no way to save yourself so you're in theory dead every time they want you to be this is greedy if it works out for you, sure, stick with it. I'm gonna say it's theoretically wrong. Emerald Wind must only ever be combined with Ice Block. But you know, if you want to do it that way, and it works out for you, sure. You guys are actually ahead of it, and Savannah is still solo pushing, which is pretty lovely. Just looking at your movement here. Seems pretty good. Uh, yeah, you give him E. Nice cleanse. You're actually playing pretty nice, dude. Like, besides your positioning in fights, and speci especially in laning, I feel like you've got some habits that are habits just because. You kill minions just because they're there and you don't like enemy lane minions very much. Always think, what am I trying to achieve here? This BZ is pretty good. You're going to get some mana. And then possibly you should uh, port on Stitches, not on Jaina. Because she's always in front of Stitches, for Christ's sake. Yeah, you go on Jaina, it's fine. The punish is there. Okay, just here. Don't stand next to Jaina. Because Jaina, she's a chicken lord. Okay, and you know that the opponent can go for her. I know you don't have cleanse back yet, but shield dust is pretty strong. Never stand next to your ranged squish as Brightwing. Maintain a respectable difference so that either only you or only she gets caught in the in the thing. One thing I notice at Silver is people group up in the same space far too often. You're also slightly too far ahead in general. You should not be able to get hit by a ETC power slide ever. Maintain here again here. This is, you're trying to follow Illidan, and I get it. And because they're low, it's okay. But, and you're high. But it is, uh, it is a bit risky that you're constantly the frontliner. You can and will get punished for that from time to time. Here, again, like, I see a lot of this at lower levels. Everyone gonna stand together. Go north, go south. There's a lot of real estate to use. All three of you got triple corrupted. And now... Three of you, uh, two of you got stunned. It could have been four. And he has got Mosh Pit. So it's that grouping. Uh, very similar actually to Little League's football. 
like soccer uh, for like six year olds. Everyone is always following the ball, eyes on the prize and not really maintaining distance and positioning. Look, even here, all four of you came together for a kiss. Why? You, right now, you need to be here. I think. What is this? It's so grouped, it's so scary. Now, of course, they have two dead, so it's fine. Now, let's talk about pings. What can you do as uh, as a um, you know team member if you think that there's a call to be made? Right now, you should be worrying about min-maxing. Look at this. They have two people dead, which is their main damage. There is no way that someone on your team can die. If you think that you have the game knowledge to make that call, make the call as soon as possible. As soon as someone of them dies, and then another, and you're five people with full life and mana, as you are here, roughly, ping that keep. Not getting enough out of winning situations is one of the main mistakes at lower and mid-level play. And the sooner you make that call, the more likely your teammates are uh, to follow up on that. You have Sylvanas. They have zero defender's advantage. You are level 16. They are not. You have five people with full life. And all you're doing is sharking around here, doing nothing. You're not taking Mercams. If you ping that keep and you go for it, it's going to be one of the rare situations where I'll say it's okay for you to be kind of forward, just to make them believe. Because you probably get follow-up kills, you get a keep and so on. <laughs> now you're going to do some split soak at the top. It's good. I like it. You say the ping. And you uh, de-push this. It's all good. Now look on the minimap. At this moment, you should not even be looking at the uh, at the lane. You should only be looking at the minimap. During moments like this, I almost only look at minimap. So you can start seeing the bigger picture. Okay. I think you accidentally hold down your alt key to uh, to cast arcane flare so you didn't bush check. Furthermore, make sure that when you bush check, you don't do it just as an afterthought. You don't even do it just as a due diligence. You cast it, you maintain your distance and then you move in. If they are really there, doing a half a second early warning arcane flare won't do a thing. And again, you're killing a lane here. Let's take a look how that looks for the opponent. Look at this. They saw you clear here, right here and they also see two of your members here. They could have picked either these guys or you. You're in relative proximity to your fort, so you think you're safe. But just because you're close to the fort, you're not really safe, are you? And so it's very important always to pretend that when people are missing on the map, they are coming for you and to play according to it. So you accidentally held down Alt when you did Q but even if you had thrown it here, you would arrive roughly at the same time as Arcane Flare. And even now you're out of position already. So you had the right idea, but you didn't execute it correctly. You should be dead. You're not, but that's because they messed up mechanically. Uh, but again, this is a, as bad as actually dying in terms of learning from it. And of course, Jaina decided to do the, the backline peel. Uh, completely rubbish. You have Z or not? You have Z, so you should be here already. Oh, why can't I scroll anymore? But yeah, uh, that was uh, that was bad. Jaina coming from behind. What? Nice cleanse, dude. You're playing Brightwing pretty nice. I think uh, with the play that you show here, you definitely can solo support Brightwing. Um, it's more okay here than in some cases for example if they have Greetings, friend. if they have um let's say they have a triple damage team fire lord ragnaros uh vala and uh, kelthas you don't want to go bright and solo support it generally but you're doing well it's just your map awareness and minimap looking i think that's lacking so i'm gonna just play it a bit more you guys are taking the objective you're still a level ahead thanks for subbing dude full mana you guys take the camp and at this point you should definitely help your team by just saying ping the keep what is this what is this no you should just say s5 please and ping the keep that is the best thing you can do for yourself and your team right now whatever this is i don't want to be a party to it do you really need to defend 
a, a camp on your outer fort when you could be going for a keep this is the best way to throw away a lead now if you give a ping and you say as five you ping the keep and they don't listen you've done what you can you see that they don't come and you act on that new information and you say okay uh, now since i have two kind of not so effective players on my team i will say okay ping back back at the right time but uh you know if they come that's great what is stitch is doing man he needs to be here overall this fight looks to be going pretty well actually if stitches was here it would definitely be over i still think you're winning here i don't hope this is one of those uh, throw games i think you're winning but why was stitches not here what did he really achieve for the team <laughs> Getting level 20, getting is over already. But yeah, uh, I'm actually glad that you sent me a victory, not a loss. Because uh, you can learn as much from them as from losses. It is a, a fallacy that you only learn from your losses. So yeah, that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. And also, I hope that you were really the bright wing. <laughs> I think so. I think I have the name right. <laughs> So you guys won with, Greetings, in my opinion, a bad friend. draft, but it shows it when almost doesn't matter. When are build suggestions coming? Smile, sorry if I missed too mentioning it already. Greetings and have a nice one. Oh. Smile, pizza incoming. Oh, I'd love some Come. pizza now, actually. Count Carver, thank you very much. And Zetixel says, thank you very much. No problem. Greetings, so it was you. Okay, friend. This reminds me of when we were watching replays together, hashtag over 9,000. Yeah, I remember Yellow Flash. We knew so little, and I knew less than you. Now, I have so much to teach you, Megalol. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, very valuable info. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Dunlex says, that was great. Jojo says, thank you. Well done, Grubby. Thank you for the analysis. Well, you know, I, I could be better too at... Uh, <laughs> at all these Greetings, things but friend. i'm glad you guys enjoyed it and it got smiled. what little uh benefits from it I used the fake egg <laughs> to block shots. <gasps> oh.